Hello everyone and welcome to tutorial sheet one. Um, we're on question three, part C, and what we're going to do now is solve it uh, by using the graphical method. Um, so I have the alternative video which uses the trigonometrical method and here again I just want you to visualize um, how we come up with this resultant and its direction. So in trig it's easy to calculate but with graphical you get an appreciation of, of physically how it works. So again, what's the goal here? The goal is what is the resultant force? And so if we were to imagine this is a soccer ball and it's tethered um, by these four uh, vectors here and if there was to pull on these four vectors um, where would the ball go? So it has to go somewhere um, and in what direction? So and how far it will go? So in terms of the force. So um, with the graphical method, we'll start off with step one, which is similar to the um, trig method, and that is to set your axes. Right, it's a good habit to get into. So here we have it already, but this doesn't really define what's positive and negative. Right, so we'll say that the um, horizontal to the right is positive x, and then vertically upwards is positive y. Okay. Now, with the trig method, the second step, step two, is to set the scale. Now, in graph paper, that's a little bit easier, um, but we can say you could either go each box means something here, or in this case, we have a ruler, um, and we can say what these lines actually mean. So in this case, we're, we have um, the Forces are in the tens, so you know 30, 15, 15, and 25. So we could say um, from here to here is is five. So that might um, help us here because things are in steps of five, which would be quite good. So we could say five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So quite quite large. So we might have to actually um, move things around here. So I'm just gonna get rid of all this. Um, all right, I'm going to have to get my axes to go up a little bit further here. So this is a good example of preparation. So making sure that you have the right scale set. So I could change my scale, but we'll stick with it. All right, so 30. All right, so um, there's no particular reason and order that you can do this in, but we'll just start off with the 30. Um, so we'll say this is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So we're all the way up here, so quite large. All right, so try and get this as large as possible so we can see it. It's all the way up to here. All right, so that is our um, 30 Newton. So 30. It's quite easy because it's 90 degrees. Right, so next we can go left with the 25 newtons, but I won't do that because I'll just eat into that there. We can go upwards with the 15 newtons, but then I'll go off the page a little bit. Um, so I'm actually just going to go with this one just from convenience. So it is um, 45 uh, plus 90 degrees, so 135. Um, but in this case, it's just 45 degrees from the uh, the horizontal here so you can imagine if i were to go halfway here this halfway point here um would mean that this is 45 and 45 so if i were to put a line right here right that would mean this is 40 this is 45 and then this is 45 so if I'm using this angle here, you can imagine now that this is also 45. All right, so it's just broken up like that. So that's why I've chosen this is 45 here. Okay, so now it's going to be 15. So I'll just line this up here, right? Make sure we get it right on the right mark. So we're going to go 5, 10, and then this is 15. All right, 
So this is this 15 Newton force vector here. So always you're starting here at the center, pushing it all the way up here, and you're starting at the point that it ends. So the start of this 15 Newton starts at the end of the 30 Newton force vector. So this is the 15 Newton. Now we can go 15 Newtons back up here, or we can go 25 this way. 25 would probably eat into that there. So I'm just going to go 15 Newtons back up this way. So that means, again, this needs to change. 45 degrees but the other way around okay can move this up a little bit okay so again it's 45 degrees from the vertical so this is 45 degrees from the vertical, so that's why you see the vertical is here, and it's 45 degrees from that. So we start just at the end of this guy, so we go 5, 10, and 15. Excellent. So I'm probably going to have to move all of this here. Okay, so this is our other 15 Newton. And this is where it ends. And then finally is the 25 Newton, which is going in a negative x direction. So now we just change the ruler here to uh, 0 degrees. Okay. And you can see because the 15 Newtons is just going back on itself there. So we will say. 15, 20, and then 25. Okay, so this is the last force vector. So this is the point here where it ends. Right, so our resultant, in this method, our resultant is going to be connecting from where we began, down here at the zero, zero axis, all the way up here, just at this, where the, the 20 Newtons ends, right? So that was our last force vector, or the 25 newtons and so you can see that it's falling into quadrant two here so you're going to say yes the uh, resultant is going to have a positive um, y direction but it's going to have a very small negative x component right so you can see it's majorly in the positive y direction but um, very small amount of the um, X component, right? So we'll try and draw that and figure out the um, figure out the actual resultant and its direction. But we know its direction is going to be um, pretty much in the, uh, the as I say quadrant two. So I just want to move this over here. So it's out of the way. Okay, so um, I'm just going to get rid of all of this here. And make this blue. So I don't know the direction, and this is where you're going to use your protractor, and I'm just going to use this ruler to try and get a rough estimate here of what the angle is going to be. It's going to be around 82, I believe. All right. So not exactly. 83 maybe. Yes, 83. So it's not perfectly accurate, but it'll do for what we're doing. All right, so let's draw this resultant here. So we start exactly at the zero, zero. If we can. Just might be 82. Somewhere in between 82 and 83, but can't be perfectly accurate using this. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, ooh, 
just about 30. Okay, so we're approximately um, 30 newtons. So it's hard to be incredibly accurate with the graphical method. And what this is saying is 83 here is actually the alpha. Right, so be careful there, um, it's the alpha value. So this is what is 83 degrees from the negative x direction. Whereas in the question, don't forget the question asks from the relative to the positive x axis. So we're actually looking for what I'll call in this case beta. All right, so that's effectively, remember alpha plus beta equals 180 degrees. So we have alpha, we know the 180, so beta has to be 180 minus 80. In this case, we have it as 83. So beta equals um, 97 degrees. So from the answer that you'll find in your tutorial sheet, we have to say that R equals 30. Well, to be fairly truthful about it, it's more around 29.5 from 29.5 newtons from what I measured and the angle which we call beta equals 97 degrees and don't forget you need to state from the positive x axis All right especially if you draw it like this then I'll know what you mean so it's just important that I get an understanding uh, you prove to me that you know what you're talking about when you put that in um, when you put in that from the positive x axis that helps me know that you know what you're talking about and that's the graphical method, and, that, and, that, and that's pretty much it. Um, what makes this easy, and you can see, is the fact that, again, they're going along the vertical and horizontal. It makes life a little bit easier. But you can see it's kind of difficult for me to get um, it right on this on this software. But um, And you can see I was just a little bit low, and you can see why, because I'm not actually passing through. This should technically pass through and above um, this, or just through this line. You can see it's not, and that's that's just because... I'm uh, not doing it accurately. So it should have worked around just above the 30 newtons. And again, I just it just highlights how a you know, graphical method can be um, inaccurate if you are being messy. Um, but it is a really quick method and much easier when we get into 3D analyses. And when it becomes into trig, it becomes quite difficult in 3D. So that's why I find it really important that you engage in you doing both methods for the same question. All right, thank you very much.